Welcome to the Golf Improvement Podcast, Episode 32. Welcome to the podcast for golf lovers and enthusiasts who are looking to take their games to new heights. Dedicated to custom club fitting, short game improvement, and effective practice to improve your golf game. This is the Golf Improvement Podcast with your host, Tony Wright. Hello, this is Tony Wright from Game Improvement Golf in Oak Ridge, Tennessee with the Golf Improvement Podcast dedicated to bringing you useful information on custom club fitting, short game improvement, and effective practice techniques to take your game to new heights. Well, today I've been looking forward to this one for quite a long time. Keith Chatham is coming back and he's going to talk about a topic that you may have heard some about in the past, but you're going to learn a lot more about it, and that's putter counterweighting. So we're going to get on with that pretty quickly. But I did want to mention one additional thing today. I didn't get to watch the PGA Tour event yesterday, but I did look at the results and things going on uh, through my through my iPhone when I was out with my wife. And Robert Streb, was that quite a deal? Breaks his putter on number nine, makes five birdies on the back nine, putting with his wedge, a, a bellied wedge. Oh, man. And under the pressure of of playing on the tour, and not only that, under the pressure of playing in the lead, I think that was an incredible performance. I think there was something more going on there than just putting mechanics. He was really in, as I would some people call, the zone. So I'd sure love to hear more about him talk about what happened there. But now we're going to get on with this interview again with my good friend Keith Chatham talking and teaching you about putter counterweighting. Well, hello, this is Tony Wright with the Golf Improvement Podcast, and today we have a return engagement from Keith Chatham, who has a business in Kerrville, Kerrville, Texas, uh, Precision Fit Golf. Keith is the 2006 International Club Club Maker of the Year, an AGCP Master Club Fitter, but most importantly for today... Uh, he's talked to a number of us other AGCP members a lot of times about putter counterweighting. He's an expert in putter fitting and uh, also putter counterweighting. So that's our topic for today. So, Keith, thanks a lot for doing this. Uh, you're very welcome. It's a real interesting topic. And, you know, it's something that I know people who play golf hear a little bit about, but I'm not sure they understand all the things we're going to talk about today. Uh Keith, in the past, you've said that more than 80% of golfers can benefit from some type of counterweighting in their putters. Uh, can you talk some about how you first learned about putter counterweighting and then also what you've seen as some of the most important benefits of counterweighting for golfers? Okay. Uh, just to let uh, everybody know, I've been uh, doing counterweighting actually for probably 16, 17 years. Wow. And uh, I went to a PCS uh, uh, meeting, Professional Club Maker Society meeting, up in Louisville, Kentucky, probably around 1999 or something like that. And I met a gentleman who was uh, uh, fairly old at the time, had been in the business for about 40 years. And we went to lunch together, and he started talking, and he started talking about putters. And he started talking about how he'd go buy uh, uh, brass rods and stuff, you know, like three foot long and stuff and use brass uh, for counterweighting. And I started asking him, you know, what all are the benefits of doing this and everything? And it's going to lead into the second part of the question and everything. He, he kind of told me, he says, well, what you see is a, a lot of people uh, are very jerky in their uh, putter swing. Uh, a lot of people come back well, with a backswing way, way too long and stop and punch and get a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, skid instead of uh, uh, a lot of roll. Mm-hmm. And he said, when you have that weight, uh, the counterweighting at the top and everything, it just kind of, kind of seems to smooth everything down. Uh, when a putter is way too light, he said, you'll see a lot of people that will 
uh, go outside to inside with their stroke and or they'll pick the putter up. And so when they come down, they're decreasing the loft. And you see a lot of skids. Sometimes you may even yeah. see the ball bounce and everything. And so, you know, that got me thinking and everything. So, you know, for the next three or four days uh, at the uh, PCS convention there and stuff, I sat down uh, with him a couple of times at lunch. And that's all we talked about because I told him I was very interested in it. And so he, he told me, you know, where to go. Like he, he went to uh, Ace Hardware back home and bought these uh, little brass rods. You can get them from uh, uh, Home Depot or Lowe's now and get them in three foot lengths and, and like five eighths inches uh, mm-hmm. on or nine sixteenths. It depends upon what size you need. Uh, and, you know, he told me, he said, cut off about two inches, you know, and weigh it, cut off an inch and weigh it, cut off in a half an inch and weigh it. And he says, as long as you get a bar that, that's pretty much the same weight, you know, in the three foot length, then you're going to know pretty much about how much you're going to be able to add and, and what to do. And so back around 1999, when I, when I got back from the PCS meeting and everything, I started, I went, I directly went down to the Ace Hardware, got a three foot piece of uh, 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 brass rod. And that's what I did. I cut everything off <laughs> half inch, ha- half inch, one inch, one and a half, two inches, two and a half to three inches. Okay. I only went to three inches at the time Yeah, and I weighed them all. And so that way I knew I knew the specific weights. I, I knew how much I had to cut off if I was going to have a 30 gram or a 50 gram or, uh, you know, even a 100 gram. And, you know, the, the uh, like three inches was up close to 100 grams and stuff. Yeah. And so I started experimenting. Of course, first, you know, being being a club maker, just as you know, being a club maker, generally we experiment on ourselves, you yeah. know, quite a bit. Yeah. And <clears throat> so I had about four putters laying around. And I put different weights in them, and, and you know, I'd drop them down. And uh, the gentleman at the time, we didn't have the stuff like the tour lock and everything. So he told me, you know, get corks, throw a cork down there. If you're putting a three-inch one down, put the cork down, you know, about three and a quarter inches. Then you can put the weight on top of it, maybe put a wrap of uh, electrical tape or something around it to hold it in the shaft. And then, you know, that way, you know, tight, get it tight and so that you can epoxy it later. And then you can experiment with it, you know, and it'll be about a quarter of an inch below the top of the shaft. And so, you know, I just started experimenting with it and everything. And back then at the time, uh, I, I had a, a length that was about, I think, 58 grams, real close to the 60 grams. And man, I sure did like that in my putter. It really felt good. You know, I was, I was rolling some stuff on, on my little carpet and everything that I had at the shop. And, uh, uh so I took it out to the uh, course and, and was practicing with it and everything. And I had tried, you know, uh, uh, like a 40 gram, uh, tried an 80 gram, but the 60 gram at that time was really doing real well. And uh, uh, I think I was probably averaging, you know, probably about 38 putts around at the time. Mm-hmm. And first round I went out, I had like 33 putts. <laughs> and I went, wow, that's five strokes, you know. And back at that time, I was probably shooting in the middle 80s, and, and I shot like an 81 that day. And uh, uh, I had counted my, my putts and everything, and I, like I said, I had 34. So, uh, you know, that's what got me started into it. Uh, the very next year, I met Bob Ubelar. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. And you know, you know about Bob and putters. Sure. And, you know, he's a putter guru, guru for most all of us club makers nationwide. And... He had also been doing that, all right? And he'd been using brass rods, and, and he's been, you know, I don't think there's anything that he hasn't experimented with with a putter. And we talked a lot, you know, at the, at the next the next year and everything, and I told him, you know, uh, the gentleman that I'd met uh, the year before from San Diego, he didn't make it that next year. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, you know, Bob and I talked about it uh, that second year and everything. And uh, uh, sure enough, you know, that kind of got me into it. And so with my customers and everything that came in, I was telling a lot of my friends I played with, my playing partners and everything, you know, about it and everything. Some of them came in and tried it and everything. And most everybody I was able to to help uh, and everything. Uh, the first part of this question uh, states that I state that, that 80% or maybe a little bit more uh, you know, probably need this. I do find some people that that really don't like it. They're so used to a, a, a light putter. Yeah. 
Uh, but with most people that have a jerky swing, or if, if they're on the back swing, they're picking the putter up and everything, I can generally help that by using uh, different counterweights, uh, you know, testing the different weights and everything with them. And uh, uh, so I have found out over, over the past like 17 years and stuff that probably around 80% of the people that come to me uh, walk out the door with uh, a counterweight in the back of their uh, putter shaft. Boy, that's incredible. But I, you know, I hadn't realized you've been doing it that long too. So that's, uh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Well, when, when you do counterweight fitting, what, what kind of things are you watching for then in the golfer's stroke and their performance to let you know you found, you know, at least maybe let's just call it, you know, their magic counterweight or whatever really works best for them. Yeah, well, I kind of touched on it a little bit in, in the first question, you know, because a yeah. lot of people have a long backswing come down. Some people are jerky. Some people do the little Billy Mayfair loop and yeah. everything, and, uh, you know, it's too light. And so I'm looking at what weight can kind of smooth that out, what weight is, uh, brings it to if someone picks that putter back up and stuff, what weight is it that they really don't pick it up and they start having a, a fairly nice uh, backstroke, okay? Mm-hmm. And so looking at the different weights. The most important thing is feel, okay, for the customer. And always make sure before the, uh, the fitting starts that I know what my feel is and I know what feels good to me, but I don't know what feels good to you. You have to tell me. So during, during the testing, you have, to, you have to speak to me. You have to tell me. And if I find out they don't, then I, I ask questions, a lot of questions and everything. But, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm watching for a lot is, is are they primarily outside to inside, uh, slight arc, big arc, uh, can't repeat it, which is very often, by the way. I see a lot of times people are, go outside the inside, the next one is a big arc, the next one's a slight arc. Very seldom ever see anybody go straight back, straight forward. Yeah. I think uh, that's probably uh, the stroke that is the hardest for most people to try and, and uh, duplicate all the time, straight back, straight forward. Uh, so you don't see that very often. Uh, but I'm looking for the for the different type of weights and everything that will uh, smooth everything out. And and maybe if someone's going a little bit outside the inside, maybe I can get them on that slight arc and get them consistently on that slight arc with with uh, using the counterweights and and trying different weights and going starting out light and going heavier uh, with that. And generally, there's an aha moment where the customer goes, "We'll hit." The first one, after I put in a, a different weight, they'll hit the first one. They go, man, that feels good. Uh, okay, we, we've made big progress there because if I've seen the swing path uh, and everything, you know, get uh, a lot better, and they're telling me that it feels a lot better, well, we're on the right track. And we still, I still will, will go up. I, I go up in weight until the customer tells me they don't like it, that it feels too heavy. Because if it is too heavy to bring it back and everything, then that's actually probably going to be even worse for their swing, their putter swing. Yeah. And so then we'll back, back, back down. And then like if I had like a 60 gram or an 80 gram that they, that they seem to do real well, uh, and I'll go back and uh, recheck those and everything. Uh, and uh, uh, the main thing is the, the customer has to tell me, you know, which one really feels the best. M- maybe I personally think an 80 gram might give the best swing or something, but if they really don't like it with the feel, then you know they're they're not going to putt with it. And if they like the little bit lighter one, 60 gram, even though we had a big big improvement with the 60 gram, maybe not quite as much. But feel is is probably the biggest thing that I look at because once we get to certain weights, okay, they'll tell you when it's too heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I kind of do the same thing myself when I'm doing it. And, you know, sometimes you get ahas, and, but but almost every time it's about, oh, yeah, this one is absolutely the best the the best feel. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and that's what you'll see. And then sometimes, sometimes not, not, not very often, but maybe 10% of the time, uh, I may have, just as an example, a, a 60 gram and an 80 gram, and the customer tells me both of them feels good then I'm going to go by my judgment. I'm going to look at their swing and everything. I've got the Tommy Pro. I'll look at that also, see which one on, on the backstroke to the forward stroke, which gives me a, a, a better uh, uh, stroke. You know, I, I kind of go with uh, what a lot of the putting gurus state, that the uh, uh, 
forward stroke is twice as long as the back stroke. Yeah. Uh, most uh, uh, amateurs that come in have it just opposite. You know, the back stroke's twice as long as the forward stroke. And but uh, so if if I look at the data, if we do the swings with both of the weights, then I'll make that choice. Okay. Yeah. It's if they tell me that that both of them feel good. And but I look at I look at them flipping their hands sometimes too. I think you talked about that a little bit early, right? You'll you'll see yeah. them. Yeah. 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 And. And, you know, generally, generally, like I said, and, and like what you said, it is an aha moment. Generally, one of the weights that you try, the, the customer will say, oh, I really like this feel. This feels good. Yeah. Well, it, as I think we know, and I'm not sure everybody knows, but, and you talked about different ways that you did weights in the beginning. I mean, these days, there's kind of two kind of counterweights. There's, there's one that you sort of stick in the end of the shaft. I'll call that a butt weight. And that's, you know, sort of the old traditional one. But then... There's things where you can stick weights down the shaft and and sort of vary the depth of the weight and vary the amount of weight. Uh, can you talk from your experience, sort of the what you've seen as the benefits of each, and are, are, are there different benefits? And and you mentioned a little bit, you know, sort of the amount of weight sometimes. Maybe so, talk a little bit about about how much weight you might put in a putter. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's let's talk about the the different types that you were talking about. The Tour Lock and the Balance Certified have have weights that go into the butt uh, of the club, and you can put down there. Uh, Tour Lock has what's called the OptiVibe, yeah, and those are the ones that go down in the shaft, and you can get the OptiVibes all the way from 20 grams to 150. Okay, I mean like like in 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 125, 150 that go down the shaft. Uh, I've only used w- one 150, and it was with the next PGA Pro oh. uh, in my area, yeah, yeah, uh, and stuff. But uh, 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 I would say that probably with uh, 75% of the people that I do the counterweighting with, the shaft that goes down the butt generally works uh, pretty well, uh, you know, w- with most of them. When you get somebody that has a super keen sense of feel, yeah. okay, that feels just any little thing, they can feel it. Super keen sense of, super keen sense of feel. Yeah. Then that's when I start working with down the shaft, okay, because they may like, uh, for example, they may like something like a uh, forty gram right underneath their lower hand, and then maybe a forty gram in the butt of the shaft. So I can combine them, okay, yeah. and uh, it, and it's it really depends upon like we were talking earlier about the swing, the swing path, smoothing it out, giving the customer the best feel, you know, and uh, also what they're doing as far as making the putts and uh, uh, the roll on the ball. You can see the roll on the ball even on their mats, or if you take them out uh, on the grass and everything. Once you get to a certain weight th- that they're doing real well with you can actually see the ball roll you know much better much sooner uh than you know without the counterweights where they were coming in uh, a little bit jerky with their swing and everything but it, it's something that you just have to test with the different ones uh but generally when i use the opta vibes is when i get somebody that comes in and maybe they're a two handicap and all they tell me about in, in the player interview is feel, feel, feel. I'm a field player. And so with that, then I'll experiment. You know, I, I generally will go down like seven inches or eight inches, uh, you know, with, with a 40 gram or something or a 60 gram OptiVibe. Maybe put, put a 20 gram in the butt or, uh, and, and then I can increase it if I, if I need be, you know, after we see what's going on. Uh, but a lot of people, when I use the OptiVibe, I would probably say when I use the OptiVibe, probably 70% of the, the golfers like the weight directly under both of the hands, right? Where the hands come together. That's so, been exactly my experience, too. It almost yeah, I, always I works that way. Maybe four to five inches down the, inside the shaft, okay? And that's where I see the majority of them. And even the guys that, that are the one or two handicaps and, and – tell me they have a you know real keen sense of feel and they're all about feel with a putter like i said probably 70 percent 75 percent generally like the weight right directly under their hands i mean right where, where that half of the weight is is under the lower hand and half the weight's under the upper hand 
and uh, uh, you know down the shaft. And, uh, and by the way, I have a have a, a 80 gram uh, in my putter, and that's how I've got it uh, in my putter. And uh, uh, so it, it's something that just like with with the driver shaft and everything. If you're looking for a shaft for a driver, test, 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 test. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, and that's you know that's how I kind of decide. Uh, if I've got somebody, you know, that tells me they're, you know, 18, 19 handicap and they're averaging 40 putts per round, I'm generally just going to at first start with just doing the down the down the butt that mm-hmm. stays the butt yeah. uh, and shafts. And generally I'll find one of the weights that will do good for them. You know, this is it's I feel like sometimes I'm cheating when I do podcasts like this with somebody like you because it's almost like I get a little I always pick up something that I didn't realize, you know, particularly the outside inside stroke and and uh, and starting with the, the butt weights first. So, like I said, it, it that's that's a fun part for me too. So, well, it's it's just like you know testing for any other club. Every yeah. person is different, yeah. and every person has a different feel. And so, what you have to do is find find the weight that gives the customer the best feel. But also, you're looking at the data and what's also giving him the best swing. Yeah. Now, we'll switch topics a little bit, but it's still putter county waiting. You know, it's been a year or so, and, and, and there was a big rage about putters. And I'm not sure there's this much anymore, but about counterweighted putters. And it's a little bit different than what we have talked about here, all those similarities, that, that, that they would – make a putter that was maybe three inches longer than this, the right length that they gripped it at the end and then heavy grip and some weight down the shaft. And I know you've done quite a lot with that putter. You may even type a putter and may even be still using that. Can you talk about some of the sort of nuances and differences of that compared to maybe more traditional counterweighting and, and, and what you've seen with it? Yes. Uh, I'm probably the one that started out on the AGCP forum and, and also with the ICG, I, I, I put some stuff out and with Wish On and everything. And uh, when the new rule came in, when the USG announced the new rule about, about the anchoring that's going to take effect on gen- this coming January 1st, came in, you know, my brain started clicking. And I'm going, okay, the guys that have the belly putter that's anchored or the guys that have the long pan- putter that's anchored, why do they anchor it that way? Well, it's because the butt end is stabilized and then they've got an axis that they can turn around. Yeah. So then I started thinking, okay, so let's just make, make putters. If a 34 inch or a 33, 34, 35 inches, probably the three most common putters and stuff. You find somebody that will say for, as an example, takes a 34 inch putter. Let's make a putter 37, 38 inches. Then now, you know, we can put a little bit heavier grip on there, a little bit bigger grip. But we can also use a 100-gram counterbalance down the butt. And I'm talking about just down the butt, not using the OptiVibes. Yeah. Okay, down the butt, and it stabilizes that butt section up there, okay? Because you've got so much weight up there that, uh, you know, you're not moving it yeah. as much. And you, you still would have a stabilized butt end on the putter, and you can still move, move the bottom of it, you know, just like they were doing if it was stabilized to their belly or, or up to their sternum. And uh, uh, so I started thinking about that and, and immediately came in. You know, you know, the bad part about that was I thought about it on a Friday night, and I told my wife Saturday, <laughs> i got to go in the shop, you know. Uh, i I, I got to make some putters, and i got to try this out and, and do it and everything. And I've had great success with it because a, a lot of uh, guys – that uh, I've made belly putters for, and a few that, that are long putters have come to me and say, what am I going to do? And so I, I started talking to them about this, and I've already converted about four or five uh, customers yeah. uh, to this. Uh, I personally believe, my, my personal belief is, is that, that uh, the big OEMs and everything really haven't uh, done this because of the fact that it's going to cost them a lot more money. However, what you're going to see out on the PGA Tour and LPGA Tour is you're going to start seeing next January, February, and March, you're going to see guys that are going to have putters that are going to be anywhere from about 37 to 40 inches long. Now, this is what I believe. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have like those uh, heavier super stroke grips that's got that 50-gram counterbalance already. 
And if that thing takes off, if, if people kind of like it and stuff, then look for next year when it really becomes uh, effective about the uh, uh, anchoring and stuff. Look for Superstroke probably to add maybe a 75 gram, okay, uh, putter that goes down down the back of that grip and everything. Uh, I firmly believe that that you can stabilize that butt end of the shaft by using counterweights and a little bit heavier grips and uh, counterweights. And I think that this is what's going to be going. I, I, I wish that I'd be able to I wish I could get a hold of Adam Scott. I would love to try to tell him and work with him and say, that, listen. That, yeah, yeah. That, that's funny. I, I, I have to say that I was thinking in the back of my mind as you talked, I, yeah, hey, Adam, listen to our podcast, right? Because he's yeah, really struggling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, th- this is what, what he's going to have to do. Now, Keegan Bradley has already been uh, using the shorter putter, okay? Yeah. Uh, because he had the belly putter. But his putter is like 38 or 38 and a half inches long. And I, I would bet money if I could get a hold of it, take that grip off on that butt end. I bet he's got a 60 gram or 80 gram or something already down there right now. Yeah. You know, they're pretty secretive at first when they do things. Uh, you know, PJ Tour players are, you know, always trying to get one upmanship on sure. everybody else. Sure. But I would bet you because, you know, well, at the U.S. Open uh, that last day, he did pretty doggone good with his putty, you know, and, and had a fairly decent round and everything. I think once he got used to, to the grass and, and the greens there, then, you know, he made a good adjustment. Uh, and so it, it's my opinion that, that this is what's going to happen. I'd be willing to I'd be willing to bet on it, too. But that's great. I mean, you know, they've all got to find ways to, to, to get a little better. So that's neat. Yeah. Well, well, Keith, let's talk. And if you don't mind, at the end, I got to tell you one one of my most favorite success story about about this. But um, I'm going to let you have the first word on that. Can you talk about some of the success stories that you know the really ahas that you had with counterweighting? I had a customer come in just last year, and he bought all of his clubs off the rack. And he says, you know, he says I shoot between about eighty one, eighty four all the time so so just buying off the rack and and he said i've never believed in all this you know the the fitting and stuff for somebody that's just a casual golfer and stuff of course you you and i both know that's not correct because we can help them more than we can help a scratch golfer uh but he said i've always had problems with my putter and he says "I'm, i'm averaging about 40 41 putts around but still shooting 81 to 85 okay and so I told him, I said, okay, let's go through a putter fitting and we'll do, we'll go through and I'm, I'm going to go through with you different uh, test putters and everything. And we're going to use some different shafts and different lengths of shafts. We're going to go through all these counterweights and everything. Yeah. And I said, now, if, if you want to get down to a really good putter fitting, we're going to spend about three hours together. Huh. And we're we're yeah. going to go through and test everything. Okay. And so we did. And so everything I've been talking about, we tested with and stuff. And I actually ended up with a 37-inch putter with him, okay, when his normal putter was 33 and a half. He ended up with 37 with 100 grams, you know, in the, in the butt of the shaft, the back of the shaft. And we got one of the super stroke grips, but not one of the, the light ones, one of those that are colored blue and are red and stuff. And those things, you know, weigh up about 120 grams. Yeah. So we were adding another 50 grams you know, with, with the grip. And, uh, uh, so he came back to me, oh, three or four months later. And he says, uh, I have shot in the seventies about 15 times now. And I count my, my putter strokes every round and I'm averaging 32. My goodness. Pretty good. Yeah. And he, that's it. He's only had one club in his entire bag fitted to him. Of course, it's the club that we use 43 to 45% of the time. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, he, he dropped his uh, handicap by, by, by like, about, I think it was a 15 or something like that. And it was down to like 9.7. Oh. Just with the, blue. Yeah, just the butter. Yeah, just the putter. And I've got a girl that, that I've worked with out of uh, Westlake. It's a suburb of Austin, Texas. 
that I've worked with uh, over the years, over the last four or five years off and on. And uh, uh, her father was a friend of Tom Wishon when he was a member of the country club there and everything. And I think Tom recommended me, uh, you know, to them. And so they, they come over and, and I've done some work with them, found some shafts, different things. But just in the last year or two, uh, I've been working with her on the putter. And uh, uh, she's gotten to the point where she was pretty good. She came out of high school, uh, has a uh, uh, golf scholarship, Sam, H- Sam Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas. And uh, uh, she's like a junior right now, but she's wanting to get on the Symmetra Tour. And the thing that's keeping her from being on the Symmetra Tour is she averages about 33 putts around. Yeah. Well, you know, the LPGA, I think, averages around 29 putts. That's their average. The PGA is, is between 27 and 28. So 34 is not going to cut it. She's not going to be able to do anything. And so I spent like uh, two different sessions with her on the putter. Each, each session is two and a half, three hours. And we went through everything. Not only did we work here in my shop, but we went over to the golf course and uh, uh, worked there also. And I ended up with, uh, she's tall. She's about five foot 11, looks blonde headed, kind of kind of a Lexi Thompson type yeah. uh, player. And uh, uh, so she ended up with a uh, 38 inch putter. And uh I also had it loaded down. Uh, I had a heavy grip on it, a little bit bigger. I think a Super Stroke 3.0, but the heavier one, not the lighter one. And I think 80 grams in the back of it uh, and everything. And uh, uh, her dad called me here last week and told me that uh, she went to the Symmetra Tour qualifying. And I think she missed it by one stroke. Oh. But she did, she, uh, she did good enough. She did good enough that Ping is going to sponsor her for like uh, eight events. And so she's going to get to play out there. And that right now, instead of averaging 34, she's right at 29 putts. So she's right at what the LPGA average is. So that that's pretty good. That is awesome. Well, and, let, let me tell you my favorite one. And I don't have performance statistics, but... Um, it must have been about four or five years ago, a local PGA pro came in with somebody else, actually with somebody who's on tour. Uh, but so he was he was just ner- nervous as heck about his putting. He putted with a claw grip, you know, he, hands and all this stuff. And and I put a 50-gram Optivibe down the shaft. And so when he was starting to putt, he was putting with this claw grip. And so he hit a couple of putts, and I looked at his hands, and I said, what are you doing? And he had instinctively changed to a conventional grip because it felt good. Yeah. And I just, it freaked me out. It actually was one of the first times I had done some counterweighting stuff in putters. But, I mean, just immediately his instincts went back to, I'm okay with this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, real quick, not to take up too much no, time. No, no, and we're fine. So that, that brought up just a little bit. Uh, you know, when we do MOI on clubs and everything, you yeah. know, balance point is very important. Well, I think that the balance of a putter in the golfer's hand is very, very important. Uh, I think if, you've, if you have a real lightweight shaft like some of the OEMs use for – for, for their putters and stuff, a 80-gram, 85-gram shaft, and it's a little bit heavier head and stuff. If, if the head is too heavy, then, then you have to manipulate your hands to make the head go where you want. If you've got the correct balance and weight up in the grip and in your hands, then the hands make the putter go where you want. Isn't that what putting should be about yeah about about just having such a such a perfect feel that we can get great speed we can release the putter easily or not or not jerk it with our hands and close that's correct so so balance balancing your hands for a putter in my opinion is very very important this has been a great podcast, Keith. Well, I'm going to give you the last word and, you know, talk about a couple things you want in terms of, ta- say, to golfers in terms of takeaways related to putter counterweighting. Uh, I'm going to say one thing. The putter is the only club in your bag that you use for 43 to 45% of all your strokes. Yet everyone wants 10, 12 more yards with their driver. Everyone wants eight, 10 yards more with their arms. 
They get fit for every club except the putter. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it just backwards. In my opinion, the putter is the most important club in the bag because of how many strokes that you use it for on the course. And in my opinion, it should be the very first club to be fit. And when you go to a fitting for a putter fitting, always ask the person that's doing the fitting, do you test with counterweights? Because it can make a very big difference. So please, you know, look at it from the aspect of, you know, even if you hit 10 or 12 or 15 yards longer with a driver, but if you're still averaging 40 putts per round, your score's not going to go down. But if you can hit and and you, you get fit for the putter and all of a sudden now you're making 34, 35 putts, just with that one club, you have lowered your handicap, you know, five or six strokes. Uh, in my opinion, it's very important. I know there's a lot of people that, that disagree and say they think the driver is off the tee box, but you can make a, a couple mistakes there, but you can never take a three putt or a four putt back. Yeah. Yeah. Get fit for the putter. Keith, great words. I really appreciate you doing this again today. Uh, Thank you. It's It's been my pleasure. Delightful. And come on, Adam Scott, we need you, right? But yeah, that's regar- right. regardless of whoever, uh, if, you know, hopefully he'll find that and, and get it because, boy, he does all the rest of it great. I mean, just like you said, you know, that's what's keeping him from where he really is right now. You know, he doesn't have that confidence with it. At least that's, that's what it correct. looks like. That's correct. Well, for it's those of you. Pleasure. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I did watch your little video on your website about putting, too, and I hope that people that go to your site look at it. It's a, a nice little overview of the things that you do. Um, but for those of you who want to learn more about Keith and Precision Fit Golf, go to www.precisionfitgolf.com. And as I said, I think it's about a minute and a half video. It gives you a, a nice little quick overview of, of some of the things Keith talked about, but the, you know the whole general area of putter fitting. So, Keith, thanks a lot. Uh, those of you listening, I know you're going to have a great time and learn a lot from this. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. www.gameimprovementgolf.com Keith, thanks again for talking with us today about putter counterweighting and much of the knowledge that you've learned over the past 19 years. The word that keeps propping up in my mind as I go back and listen to this interview is balance and how important having a putter in your hands that's truly balanced for you, for the way you you swing it, can help you to play your best golf and to putt your best. If you want to learn more about Keith Chatham and Precision Fit Golf, please go to his website, www.precisionfitgolf.com. Well, that's it for today. In two weeks, more talk about putting improvement. This time with Dr. Christian Marquardt, the inventor of the SAM Putt Lab and an expert in motor learning principles. And he's going to talk about movement dynamics and putting improvement. I know you're going to enjoy this one too. See you then. Game Improvement Golf, your source of information and inspiration to become an exceptional golfer now. www.gameimprovementgolf.com